What is up guys, Photo Fever here and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. Now I've seen this design trend going around recently and I must say I've really liked it. It is called Glaph Morphism. And basically what it is, take a standard photo and you go ahead and it looks like you're applying what is basically a glass pane in the photo. Now on that glass pane, you can apply logos, text and all sorts of things. And I've seen quite a few different designers use it. UI designers use it a lot in their apps. Uh, you've seen it in web design, but you also can see it in game designs as well. So today I thought I'd share my secrets on how you can create this effect at home just using Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo that you'd like to add this glass morphism effect. Now it works on all types of photos, but today we're specifically going to be working on landscape photos. And if you would like to follow along, I'll make sure to place the link in the description with the photo that I'm using today. And today's photo is off of unsplash.com and it is this photo here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a glass morphism effect. So it looks like there's a pane of glass within the photo. Now, it can be any shape, you can make it a circle, a square, uh, rounded edges, or all sorts. So today I'm going to be using a square with slight rounded edges. Now, the way you can add a shape, and this is the, probably the most important part, is go ahead over to the left-hand side tools panel, and we're gonna go ahead and choose rectangle square tool. Or if you click and hold, you've got your ellipse tool, triangle tool, and all sorts. You've even got a custom shape tool at the bottom. But we're just gonna be working on a rectangle in this tutorial. And what I'm gonna do is hold down shift, just so I can create a perfect square. And we're gonna make it fairly large. Now, it will come up with the properties panel once you've applied the square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our stroke. We're just gonna turn that off. We don't need a stroke in this particular case. And we're gonna to go to our fill. And what we're gonna do is I'm just going to apply maybe a white color. So I'm just gonna apply it just as pure white as you can see here. Now, if you're working in a very modern Photoshop, you can apply rounded edges by looking at the corners of the square. So in the corners of the square, you've got this small little circle here. All you'll need to do is just simply drag and you can start applying your rounded edge like so. So I'm gonna apply around 200 pixel rounded edge effect. And all you can do is turn off the properties. Now, once you're happy with that, all you need to do is click enter and that has now applied it to your photo. Now, obviously, if you wanna move it around, you're more than welcome to, which is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna have it placed in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and press command T. That will allow you to free transform. And then all you need to do is simply move it around until you are happy. And I want it bang smack in the middle like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter to confirm placement. Now this is where we want to start adding in the blur. So what we're gonna do is just gonna duplicate the background, turn it into a smart object, and then apply a Gaussian blur. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our background here and we're gonna go ahead and press Command J. That will duplicate the background layer. Now I'd recommend applying a smart filter. Just in case you ever want to increase or decrease the amount of blur in the photo after the fact. If you don't apply a smart filter, then you're not gonna be able to do this step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on there and then I'm gonna go ahead and convert it into a smart object. Then what I'm going to do is go up to filter then I'm going to drop down to blur and I'm gonna go down to Gaussian blur. Now I find a good blur for this glass morphism effect is around 30 pixels, but experiment, it might be more or it might be less, all depending on what photo you're working on. But in this tutorial, I'm going with 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 30 pixels as the radius there. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Now obviously this is currently below our square, which is really not what we want. So I'm gonna to go to our background here and I'm gonna go ahead and draw it right at the top. I'm actually going to make it a little bit simple. I'm actually just going to call this blur layer here. But obviously it's now disappeared. You can't see the square anymore. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a clipping mask. We're not gonna use a layer mask for a reason that I will discuss in a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on that layer I'm gonna go down to clipping mask. And as you can see, that blur has now been applied to the shape below and not affecting the rest of the photo, which is great. But now it just looks like you've got a blurry center of the photo. We need to add a glass morphism effect. So we're gonna make this look like a pane of glass. And we can do this by using our adjustment layers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to that rectangle here and we're gonna go ahead and double click. 
And what this will do is will bring up our layer stylizing box. And this with our blending modes as well, we can create a really cool effect. So what we're going to do is we're firstly, we're going to go down to gradient overlay. So we're gonna go ahead and select gradient overlay like so. And this is where we can start adding an opaque kind of opacity to the actual photo itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, firstly go to our blending mode. We're just gonna keep it normal. We're gonna go for an opacity of around 40%. But more importantly, we're gonna to go to our gradient here. So in our gradient, we want to choose, firstly on the left-hand side, we want to go for more of a dark gray, like a gray that we've got here, like so. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Then on the right-hand side, we want to choose pure white. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose pure white. Then on the top here, so you've obviously got your color on the bottom section of this gradient, but on the top section, you on here, you've also got an opacity. And the opacity for this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose 45%. Oh, I've made it disappear. And then on this side here, we're going to go and want to choose an opacity of 10%. So we're gonna choose an opacity like so. And you can move it around until you are happy with the result. So I'm gonna go for an opacity of 10%. So I'm gonna just select it like so. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So what it should do is it look, should look something like this. So we've got gray to white, and then on the on top section, the opacity, we've got 45 to 10%. I'm gonna go ahead and click it like so. Now you can change the angle. So I find uh, changing the angle so it's slightly darker at the top or slightly lighter at the bottom. Again, you guys can experiment with what you think looks best. But for this particular case, I'm going to go for an angle of around minus 45. I find that looks good, having a darker color sometimes at the bottom and a brighter color at the top. But the problem is now it just looks like we've got this kind of gray blob. We need to make it look more like glass. And we can do this by adding in a edge or what we call a stroke. So what we can do is go to our stroke section. We've got just here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a stroke. Now in our stroke settings, it's going to be very similar to our uh, overlay settings we've, we've just applied. So we're gonna go for a size, we're gonna go for uh, 20 pixels. Uh, actually make it a little bit smaller. So let's go for 15 pixels in this particular case. Uh, we're gonna go for our blending mode. Again, keep the blending mode as normal, so we don't wanna change the blending mode. Uh, with our opacity, we're gonna go for around 15%. Uh, and then underneath, we've got our gradient here. And we want to go for a similar gradient, but an opposite gradient to what we were previously. So if you went from gray to white, now we want it to go from white to gray. So with here, we want to make sure we've chosen pure white. And then we're gonna go ahead on the right-hand side, we're going to go ahead and choose a darker gray. So again, whatever you did, just do it in reverse for when it comes to your stroke versus the overlay that you've just recently applied. So once we've done that, and then again, or if you want to, we can add in a 45% gradient there. Uh, so opacity, sorry. And then we're gonna go add in a 10% there. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. And then what you can do is go ahead and click OK. Now, this is a little bit dark, so actually what I'm going to do is actually increase the opacity a little bit. So I'm gonna go for something like that. So we'll go for about 20%, I think, in this particular case. And then with our angle, we want the exact same angle that you had on your overlay. And this will correctly match up the kind of stroke that you're applying. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go to our angle here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down to minus 45. So it is basically the exact opposite of what we applied previously. And then if you want to, you can, uh, I think what I might do is increase the opacity again a little bit. I'm gonna go for 25%, it looks like in this particular case. And then what you can do is go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, if we go click off, now we've applied this really cool glass morphism effect. Now, the reason I like using a clipping mask instead of using a layer mask in this particular case is because, because we've applied it as a smart object, we can actually move the square or change the shape of the square after the fact. So let's say I want this square to be more of a rectangle. We can go ahead and click this rectangle here, press Command T on our keyboard, and I can actually make it smaller. So I can go ahead and do it something like so. And because we've applied it, again, using a, uh, a clipping mask instead of a layer mask, we can move it around as much as we want. And we can actually take this shape and apply it to another photo, and you can create an action. So you can create this glass morphing effect a lot quicker. 
So I think this is a really cool design and I must say, I really like it. And if you want to, you can even cut out certain shapes within your landscape photo and place it above the layer so you can add this three dimensional look as you can see on the photo here. It can add sometimes depth and perspective and it makes it look like the glass is actually inside the photo itself. This is a really cool effect as well. So what I can do is now show you the before photo and then I can show you the after and then here you go, I've applied a few logos onto it, I've actually applied uh, some text to it, and it's really that simple. And it must say it looks really cool. So if you're thinking of maybe using it for a website or maybe you're using it for more of a design platform, this is how you can create this really cool graph morphism effect. Here is the before and here is the after.